Hello, my name is Eldar Aliyev, I am a lead DevOps engineer at SoftServe company and today we will talk about the Operator Lifecycle Manager for Kubernetes. So, let's start. During this call, we will discuss the main topics related to the Operator approach for Kubernetes. It's the Operator Framework, Operator SDK, Operator Lifecycle Manager aka OLM, and finally, we will have the usage demo. Let's open the first section. In this section, we will try to remind what actually is the operator pattern for Kubernetes, what is the operator framework, and what components are related to the operator framework. Let's take a look on this image. It represents the main idea of the operator pattern approach. Here we have the controller that watches for the resources, and then it do some kind of recancel actions to transform your resources to the desired states. For example, you have an Nginx custom resource that describes how the Nginx should be deployed. In the controller we have some kind of custom logic that takes the information from the custom resource and creates some kind of native resources in the Kubernetes related to your deployment. For example, it will create a deployment, service, ingress, config maps, and etc. There are a lot of different ways how you can implement the operator pattern. However, today we will talk about the most popular of them, it's the operator framework. Before we start, we need to understand the difference between these three definitions. The operator framework, operator SDK, and operator lifecycle manager. The operator framework, it's a common name. It's a set of the tools that are needed to build, maintain, and manage the operators in the cluster. It consists from the operator SDK and the operator lifecycle manager. So the operator SDK and operator lifecycle manager, it's actually the components of the operator framework. Operator SDK, it's a set of tools that you need to build and bundle your operators. The Operator Lifecycle Manager is some standalone services that uh, manage your operators and also the custom resources related to that operators. So it will give you an ability of the automatic updates and maintenance for your operators. So, as I mentioned, the Operator Framework is a set of the tools that are needed to, the, to build and test and manage and also the bundle your operators and do all the actions actually related to the operator itself. So it's allowed to build, manage and discover. In, the, in this section we will discuss the operator SDK, what actually the operator SDK, how we can build the operator with operator SDK and also we'll talk about the operator's capability levels. So, Operator SDK, as was mentioned before, it's a set of tools that are needed to build and bundle your operator from scratch. So, it allows you to take your idea and transform it to the Kubernetes operator that will do some kind of automation actions on your application and it will allow you to manage the Kubernetes application in the Kubernetes native way with the custom resource definitions and etc. So, it will allow you to build, test and iterate your operators. How actually it works? So, you have an idea, you need to build the operator, test it locally and after that you will get two artifacts. One is the package manifest and the second one is the operator image. So, the operator image contains the controller application and we'll examine the Kubernetes API for the, for the custom resources. An operator manifest has the metadata related to your operator. Also, it describes the deployment strategy for your operator and set of the ownet custom resource definitions and the custom resource definitions that are required but related to another operators. And finally, it contains the set of the permissions that are needed by your operator to manage the resources. You can build the operators with operator SDK in the three different ways. 
In the native way, you can take the call length and write all the code with Go, uh, in, including the um, reconcile logic. So here you need to create the project from scratch. Then you need to initialize the custom resource definitions, the controllers for that custom resource definitions, then be everything, test, bundle, and create package manifest that will describe your operator. The second way is the Ansible way. So here you don't need the Golang and you can write your reconcile logic using the Ansible playbooks. So the workflow is pretty straightforward is, is, and is all, almost the same as for the Golang. And the last one it's a Helm. So here you also don't need to write any kind of reconcile logic. So it will allow you to take the operators and create it from the Helm charts. So the this approach doesn't allow you to create some additional logic. So it will just take the Helm and will install and upgrade your application from time to time. However, no customization and no custom logic. And finally, let's take a look and compare the ways how you can create operators and the capability levels. So, there are five capability levels. The first level related to the basic installation. So, there, you, your operator just take the custom resource and install the application from that custom resource. The second way, it's a seamless upgrade. So, it's if your operator supports the versioning and ability upgrade from version to version. The third level is the full life cycle. So in this case, the additional logic like restoring of the backups or backup creation or disaster recovery are included in your operator reconcile logic. So as you can see, like it's not supported for the helm on this on this stage. So just for the Ansible and Golang based operators. The fourth step is the deep insights. So it depends if you include some kind of configurations or components to your application to be monitored and to be logged. So for example, you can add some service monitor for the Prometheus to your application to create the metrics. And also you can add some kind of configuration for the logging for your application. For example, if you want to use Grafana Loki or ELK tag. And the last five ability level, it describes ability of your operator to horizontally and vertically scale your application, make it flexible, and also automatically do the disaster recovery uh, and etc. Okay, here we are, the operator life cycle section. So here we will talk about the operator life cycle itself. We will take a look on the components of the operator life cycle manager. We will take a look on the resources that are provisioned by operator life cycle manager. And also we will take a look on the update strategies. So the operator life cycle manager is a set of the services that will be run in your target Kubernetes cluster and will manage the operators in your cluster. So with operator life cycle, you can install, manage and automatically update your operators. Here is a way how you can install the operator life cycle manager to your cluster. There are two ways. The first one, if you already used the operator SDK, so it supports the automatic installation of the OLM. And the second one, you can take, a, take the installation script from the GitHub, use it and execute it to install the OLM to your cluster. How actually it works? You, on the previous step, when you built your operator, you have the package manifest that contains the information about your operator and about and instructions how this operator should be installed in the system. So the operator lifecycle manager bundles the um, package manifest to the catalogs 
and then read the information from that catalog and according to the subscription it will, it will install the operators to the system. So once the package manifest will be installed to the cluster then the operator will be automatically installed by the OLM. In case if you don't have the OLM the custom resource will be created but no operators will be appeared. There are five features that are provisioned uh, by the um, operator lifecycle manager. So the first one it's over the air updates and catalogs. So this feature allows you to manage your applications in the Kubernetes native way. So with the custom resource definitions and actually with the controllers. The second one it's a dependency model. So it allows you to link your operators with another operators that are needed uh, for your applications to be successfully run it. The third one is discoverability. So the OLM gives users the ability to install applications in easy way, like select the applications, choose the parameters and install it. The fifth option is a cluster stability. So the OLM will always keep your operators updated and will try to omit the broken versions and will make your cluster to be stable. And the last one it's a declarative UI controls. So all OLM features are described as a custom resources. So you can configure it with just with creation of the custom resource based on the custom resource definitions that we will take a look on the next slides. So the OLM provides five kind of resources. First one, it's a cluster service version. So actually it's a, your package manifest for your operator. Catalog source. It describes the catalog that contains the cluster service version resources. The third one, it's a subscription. So it creates the dependency between the item in the catalog and between the operator that should be installed in the system. The five it's installed plan. So one subscription will be uh, created and if the OLM will find the new version of your requested operator in the catalog, so it will create the installed plan. Sometimes happens that you need to approve the installed plan, but we will take a look about this one later. And the last one, it's an operator group. So it groups the operators at and give the ability for the multi-tenancy for your operators. So here is presented cluster service version. So as I mentioned, it contains the information about your operator, like the name, provider, and some additional branding information. Also, it contains the deployment strategy for your operator. So it's a way how the OLM should install your operator to the system. Then set of the permissions, like a cluster permissions, and the namespace permissions and also it describes the custom resource definition that are owned by this operator and that are needed from another operators. Also one important thing is the install mode. So in the install mode you can select how your operator could be installed. But about this one we will talk later. Here is a catalog source. So the catalog source represents the catalog with the cluster service version resources. Usually it's a bundled image that contains the YAML files with the cluster service version. Once you create the catalog source, you need to find the source. The source is basically the Docker image. Here you can also write the publisher fit and also abstract how OLM, how, how an OLM should pull the new catalog image and verify if something changed or not. So on this image, uh, on this example, it's a 30 minutes. So once the catalog source is installed, it will create the pod with this image and this pod will be examined by the OLM and as a response for the OLM request, it will return the list of the cluster service version. So here is an example of Gomet, so you can match the catalog sources. So you need to create it and then you can take a list of the 
available catalog. So you can have the multiple catalogs in your cluster that contains the different cluster service version documents. Subscription. Subscription, it's a linkage document that tells to OLM that it should take some specific package manifest from specific catalog source and install it to some specific namespace. And also it takes the specific channel for the package. About the channels we will talk later. So as you can see here, so it used the source, it's a reference to the catalog source, it has a source namespace, it's a namespace where the um, source uh, catalog is placed. It has a name of the operator, actually name of the package manifest, and also it has the name of the of the channel. Also it has the optional field that is called install plan approval. It could has two different views. We will talk about this in the next slide. So the install plan it's some kind of resource that describes which version of the cluster service version document will be installed. And also it contains the field that is responsible for the approvement. So if you select the automatic approval so you don't need to approve it if you select the manual approval in your subscription then you will be need to change the approved field and just after that the olm will start the installation of your cluster service version to your cluster so here is a set of the comments like how you can create the subscription then as a result, you will get the installation plan and here is presented the shortcut how you can patch the installation plan to proceed with the installation of your cluster service version. And the last one, it's the operator group. So it's pretty weird kind of resource um, that shows like which namespace are allowed for the installation of the operator. For example, if you have the namespace and you want to install the operators, you definitely need to create the operator group in this namespace and target your uh, operator group to this namespace. However, you also can use the multiple namespaces here and use the selector via labels. One more important thing that you are not allowed to have um, multiple operators groups in them. Um, one namespace. If you will have the multiple operators groups, the OLM actually will throw the error and won't install the operators to this namespace. Now let's click on the OLM components. There are three OLM components. It's an OLM operator, catalog operator, and the package service. Let's go across all of them. So the OLM operator looks for the cluster service version resources in the in your cluster and once the cluster service version resource appears in the cluster it will take all the information from it and install the operator according to the manifest also it looks for the install plan to understand if the cluster service version should be installed or not and also it looks for the operator group group to check if it's allowed or not to install the operator to the cluster the next one it's a catalog operator so the catalog operator checks the catalog sources and understand if required operators are completely included to this catalog source also it has it looks for the screen and checks if there are some subscription for some channel in some catalog sources if there are subscriptions it as action it will be them cluster service version in your resource and actually for that you also need to approve the installation plan if it's it, if, if it was configured as a manual approval also this component like makes the seamless upgrades of your cluster service version documents registered in your cluster and the last one it's a patch server so it allows you to get a list of the packages that are available for installation to your cluster without going across all catalog sources one by one and examining it. So here is presented the set of the packages that are related to the community operators catalog 
from the operator higher. So we also will talk about it later. Now the most complicated topic is splitting of the operators by channels and the upgrade strategies. So there is a good mechanism that allows you to split your operator versions via channels. For example, you have development stage. For the development stage, you can use the alpha channel. Actually, it's up to you which names you will use for the splitting by channels, but uh, the classic naming is uh, alpha, beta and stable. The main problem that operator lifecycle manager do the upgrade and for example here if you need to upgrade from the version 0.6.1 to 0.9.2 it will go across all the versions that um, are included in this channel so it will install 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.9.0 after that 0.9.2 so it will go across all the versions and sometimes happens that between the working versions could be some broken versions. So then you can use like another channel, it's a beta. So you can promote the um, your packages from the alpha channel to the beta channel and omit in that channel, omit the um, broken versions. And for example, for the upgrade uh, from the 0 0.6.9 to 0 0.9.2 you don't need to install the intermediate versions and finally you might have the stable versions that will contain just uh, not just a release candidate but the stable versions of your application and finally omit some possibilities of the installation of broken versions so here is again represented that approach so the one operator version could be included in multiple channels so to do not uh, create the separate document for the version so you can like, combine it and for example include the version of the operator to the one uh, and second channel like to alpha and to beta and here is presented that like the same story like on the previous slide however like Mm, on the combination of the two different channels and here is presented the way how you can like configure the upgrade mechanism for you. your operators so there are two ways the first way that you can include the information to the catalog source like which version you need to omit or what actually is the upgrade path for the specific version and the second way is that you can de decide this one in your cluster service version document actually in your package manifest so you can use the replaces option that will point this version of the operator like which previous version should be installed like to be upgraded to to this one and also you can use the skips option that like write the set of the versions that should be omitted like if you don't need to uh, install this version as an intermediate or probably there are some broken versions there so you can use the skips so this schema represents for example without the replaces like all the versions will go across one by one if you have the skips so the operator for example if you are upgrading from the 0 0.6.9 it will install 0 0.9.0 and after that 0 0.9.2 and 
again and again. So here is presented the final workflow. So the first step that you need is to build your operator and bundle it. That means that you will create the package manifest with the instruction on how to install your operator. The second step is the catalog. So you need to collect all your cluster service version documents and create a catalog bundle with it. And then you need to create the catalog source resource to register your uh, catalog bundle in the cluster. The third one is to create the operator group. So we need to decide where you will install your operators. The last one is the creation of the subscription. So the subscription will um, allow you to install the cluster service version from the re registered catalogs. And the last one, probably optional, uh, if you select the installation plan to be manually approved, you need to make the approval of the installation plan. And once you will done this one, the operator will be installed in your system and will provide the custom resource definitions. And according to these custom resource definitions, you can create the custom resource that will represent the actual instances of your application. Now, some statistics from the Operator Lifecycle Manager on the GitHub. So, it's a pretty popular project. It's almost 1.4 million of stars on the GitHub. So, and it's like totally and proactively contributed by the community members. And the last thing is the Operator Hub. So, for example, if you create the operators for the um, some public application and you want to share it with the community, you can just build your own package manifests and then propose it for the operator hub. Sometimes you need like to have the private application. So in that case, you can deploy your own instance of the operator hub that will manage its own catalogs. And there, like this will provide the like UI way how you can install your application or it for your your cluster users and now we will have the usage demo for this usage demo i already installed the olm to my minikube cluster so let me show you So I'm in the OLM namespace and here I have the OLM operator service, catalog operator service, two replicas of the package server, and also I have the operator hub IO catalog. So as I mentioned, this pod is created as a reaction on the creation of the catalog source. So it runs the image that is provisioned in the catalog source. And actually here, from here we can actually get the package manifest for the community operators that are provisioned on the operator hub. So, and for example, here on the operator hub, I find the community operator for the ETCD that is provisioned by Cloud Native Compute Foundation. So here I can select the channel. So I will leave the default one. I have the latest version here and I want to create the ETCD cluster custom resource, but this will be possible just after the operator will be installed. Uh, let me show you the code snippets that I prepared for, for this demo. Okay, here is it. So, um, here, the first resource that we will apply, it's the operator group. But before that, let's check the list of the packages that uh, we have in the OLM. Okay, so here we have a lot of different packages. Let's take a look if we have here the etcd. Okay, so we have the etcd here and it's available for the installation. Let's create the operator group for the default namespace 
to make sure that operators will be able to, to be installed to the default namespace. Okay, so the operator group is created. Now let's take a look on the subscription. So as I mentioned, we will take the etcd operator from the single namespace alpha channel and we use the operator hub.io catalog in the OLM namespace as a source uh, for our operator manifest. And also I use here the install plan approval manual just to demonstrate to you how the install plan looks like and how we can approve it with this shortcut. Let's apply the subscription. Okay, so the subscription is created. Now let's wait until the install plan will be created. Okay, so this may take some time. So here I have the install plan that will install the etcd operator 0.9.4 and I need to approve this install plan. So I will take the name of this install plan. Slightly modify my command. And here is it. So I already patched it. So for now, we probably might have to see the etcd operator. Let's go back to the dashboard and check. So let me switch to the default namespace. And here is it. So the etcd operator is starting. This also may take some time until it will pull the image. Okay, before that, let's take a look on the custom resources that are provisioned and managed by this operator. So we have the etcd cluster. So it represents a cluster of etcd nodes. Let's take a look which parameters we can have here. So we have the size and we have a version for the etcd cluster. So I already prepared this resource, here is it. So once we will apply it, we will have the etcd cluster ready with the three nodes and deploy it with the version 3.2.13. Let's take a look on our operator. Okay, so it works. It means that we can now create the custom resource and it will be processed by our operator. Okay, so I created it. Okay, looks good. Let's take a look on the list of the pods here. Okay, now the pods started to be in the in the same namespace. So definitely it will be three pods here. Let's verify what we have actually here for the custom resources. Okay, this may take some time. It is a D cluster. Okay, here is it, my etcd. Let's take a look on this object. What we have here. Okay, so this resource was processed by the operator, and as you can see, it adds some kind of additional stat status fields. So it shows the client port and it shows the desired state and it shows current, current size and the service. 
let's back to the pods and verify if everything is running. Okay, so the one pod is running, however, it might be three pods. Okay, here is the second one. So, and the pods will appear one by one until it will reach the size of the three nodes. So, to make the cleanup, let me, let me switch back to code. To make the cleanup, we need to delete the etcd custom resource itself. Then we need to delete the subscription. After that, we need to remove the cluster service version that is installed to the uh, to our cluster. And after that, we just need to delete the operator group. So if I will delete the etcd, probably the pod should be disappeared. Okay. Let me also delete the subscription in the meantime. And once I will delete the cluster service version from my cluster, the operator also will be utilized by OLM. Okay, and also I can delete the operator group, I don't need it anymore. Okay, let's switch to the dashboard. So... Here is it. So I don't have any pods, even I don't have the operator pods here. So everything is pretty clean. So it's a result of our usage demo. So before we will finish our conversation, so I just want you to remind that Today in Ukraine we still have a war with the Russian invaders and our company provides some initiative that is called Drive for Life that uh, takes the money and like, collect the donates to support our military forces. With this QR code you can go to the portal and donate some costs for the Ukrainian military forces. Also, in the Slack chat, we have a quiz, so please participate and you can win some valuable prizes. Also, you can ask any questions that are related to our company or if you want to ask something else. Uh, from my side, that's all and thanks you for watching.